The biker estate, more commonly referred to by its predominant feature, the biker wall, is a social housing project like no other. Constructed from 1968 through to 1981, its vibrant colour scheme and varying points of elevation and a seemingly fluid shape overall set this place apart from its social housing peers as it came to existence amidst a flurry of Bluetooth architecture that is contested as to its efficacy in the modern day. However, the biker wall still has its complicating factors. The estate replaced the old biker slums, which were declared unfit for habitation by government authorities in 1953, and subsequently demolition was started in 1966, just two years prior to the beginning of the design and construction of the wall. Sentiment among the residents of the terrace slums in Biker was mixed, as although they had longed for their deserved improvement in living conditions, the sense of community and unity was palpable and the demolition of the slums signalled to many as the end of this tightly knit microcosm of British working class society. Ralph Erskine, a British architect who had lengthy history in working on social housing projects in Sweden, was brought in by local Labour politician T. Dan Smith to provide forward thinking in the aim of providing the people of Biker a better place to live. Erskine aimed to recreate as much of the community spirit present in Neil Biker and thus consulted heavily with the residents in the design phase opening up an office in an old funeral parlour in Biker. However, less than 20% of the native residents of Biker were actually rehoused in the estate, most likely due to demolition of the terrace slums outpacing construction due to the slow pace of the resident-led consultation. However, cost limitations soon led to this consultative approach falling by the wayside. The vibrant colour scheme and more creative architectural design choices make the Biker wall a more attractive living space for its residents than would otherwise be the case in its brutalist counterparts, resembling more a community than merely housing. The mapping of the estate, with houses seemingly on top of each other within the wall, has both its positives and negatives. While the togetherness of the homes garners a strong community spirit as it pushes socialisation, there are areas of the estate that feel near claustrophobic. Poor little alleyways and staircases can be catalytic for crime, as stated by a police report conducted in the early 2000s. The criminality, however, should not discredit the majority of people who live in the biker wall that are as friendly as hospitable as you are likely to meet anywhere in Newcastle, with a myriad of cultures coexisting to create a microcosm of modern British working class society. Thus, all things considered, although there is most certainly room for improvement and that this improvement should be of paramount importance for the powers that be if they are concerned with what is the right thing to do, the biker wall has lended itself to recreating a modern spin of the camaraderie of the old biker.